Marc Gabriel Charles Glaire was a Swiss artist who was a resident in France from an early age. He took over the studio of Paul Delaroche in 1843 and taught a number of younger artists who became prominent, including Henri Lionel Brie, Georges du Maurier, Claude Monet, Pierre Auguste Renoir, Louis Frederick Schutzenberger, Alfred Sisley, August Tulmouche, and James Abbott McNeil Whistler. Glare was born in Cheville near Lausanne. His parents died when he was eight or nine years old, and he was brought up by an uncle in Lyon, France, who sent him to the city's industrial school. He began his formal artistic education in Lyon under Bonifon before moving to Paris, where he enrolled at the École des Beaux-Arts under Hers. He also attended the Académie Suisse and studied watercolor technique in the studio of Richard Parks Bonington. He then went to Italy, where he became acquainted with Horace Vernet and Louis Leopold Robert. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. And don't forget to press the bell icon so you can be among the first to be notified of our new videos. We would appreciate a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. It was through Horace Vernet's recommendation that he was chosen by the American traveler John Lau Jr. to accompany him on his journeys round the eastern Mediterranean, recording the scenes and ethnographic subjects they met with. They left Italy in the spring of 1834 and visited Greece, Turkey, and Egypt, where they remained together until November 1835, when Lau left for India. Glare continued his travels around Egypt and Syria, not returning to France until 1838. He returned to Lyon in shattered health, having been attacked with inflammation of the eye in Cairo and struck down by fever in Lebanon. On his recovery, he proceeded to Paris and set up a modest studio on Rue de Université. He began to carefully work on the ideas which had been slowly shaping themselves in his mind. In 1843, Charles Glare received a medal of the second class for his oil painting titled Evening, which afterwards became widely popular under the title Lost Illusions. This work brought Glare brief acclaim at the Salon. It blends classicism with romanticism. This man is a poet seated on the bank of a river with his head drooping and a wearied posture, letting his leer slip from a careless hand and gazing sadly at a bright company of maidens whose song is slowly dying from his ear as their boat is borne slowly from his sight. He exhibited the separation of the apostles. Until then, he had not been contributing to the Salon, yet he worked steadily and was productive. He had an infinite capacity of taking pains and when asked by what method he attained such marvelous perfection of workmanship, he would reply, en y passant toujours, which means always thinking about it. In 1849, he sent the Dance of the Bacchante to the Salon. Brightly lit, for the most part, beneath a dramatic sky of movement, that seems to imitate the sacred ritual's dancing, is a scene of the devotees. The sheer rock face of the background masks the ceremony from the broader countryside 
and emphasizes its secrecy. It has been noted that glare excluded icons of masculinity, which is unusual for such a scene. There isn't Silenus nor the typical male satyrs of the woodland. Bacchus himself is only present in the form of his bronze statue on the column to the left. This religious and intoxicated fervor is there to preserve women. Glare became influential as a teacher and he took over Paul Delaroche's studio. His students included Jean-Léon Jérôme, Jean-Louis Hamon, Auguste Toulmouche, Whistler, and several of the Impressionists, Monet, Renoir, Sisley, and Basile. He did not charge his students a fee, although he expected them to contribute towards the rent and the payment for the models. The students also were given a say in the running of the school. Though he lived in almost complete retirement from public life, he took a keen interest in politics and was a voracious reader of political journals. For a time, under Louis-Philippe, his studio had been the rendezvous of a sort of liberal club. To the last, amid all the disasters that befell his country, he was hopeful of the future. La raison finira bien par avoir raison, which means reason will end up being right. He died suddenly on May 5, 1874, while on a visit to the retrospective exhibition, opened on behalf of the exiles from Alsace and Lorraine. He had never married. His noted other works include Deluge, which represents two angels speeding above the desolate earth from which the destructive waters have just begun to retire. Prodigal Son. In this work, the artist has ventured to add to the parable the new element of mother's love, greeting the repentant youth with a welcome that shows that the mother's heart thinks less of the repentance than of the return. Ruth and Boaz. Ulysses and Nausicaa. Hercules at the feet of Omphal. Hercules's punishment for inadvertent murder was to stay in the house of Omphal, a Lydian princess, for a year and attend to duties seen as womanly. So here, Glare depicts the flawed hero, spinning thread, sitting at the feet of a watchful Omphal. Glare feminizes Hercules by giving him an amber robe. With his resumption of the male role at the end of the year, the couple were said to have married. The young Athenian, or as it is popularly called, Sappho. Sappho stands in a confident and self-possessed stance, turning away from the viewer while pouring a cup of wine. The viewer is not privy to her facial expression, nor whether this moment is a prelude to or the aftermath of her composing. In this case, Sappho's legendary inspired poetic vision also implies the melancholic self-doubt of Glare about his own status and legacy. Romans under the yoke. Glare depicting the celebrated victory of the Helvetians over the Romans at the Battle of Agendicum, modern-day Agen, in 107 BC. The image is emblematic of the independent spirit of the Swiss people who over the centuries had suffered Habsburg, 
French, Russian, and Austrian invaders. Perhaps Divico, the leader of the Tigurini tribe, an orchestrator of the triumph in the field, is on horseback, raising his sword and obscuring his face on the left. Charles Glair left a considerable number of drawings, watercolors, and portraits, totaling more than 683 artworks, including sketches and studies. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.